Okay, we're even. Let's, let's go that way. Help! Do you boys have your hollow passes? <laughs> sure, Mr. Dream. Yeah. There you go. You are supposed to be in the counseling office, not playing games in the hall. Sorry, Mr. Dragon. Oh, don't be sorry. Just get on down there. Chase. back to Mrs. Walford and thank her for me. Jason? What's so fascinating? Not. She just leave them in there all along. I beg your pardon. It ain't none of my business. You see them taking a test, and you see me leaving them alone, so I must be pretty stupid, right? It ain't my bin. That's an aptitude test, Jason. It's impossible to cheat on an aptitude test. Then how come you keep looking in at them? Well, because, uh, basically, I don't believe a word I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, Jason Allen, when's the last time you had an aptitude test? Don't have to. I ain't in no college prep. That doesn't matter. I can still set up an appointment. Uh-uh. Well, it's not like a graded thing. Just give you a general idea of your interests. Like, uh, what kind of work you'd be good at. What's so funny? You really want to know? Yeah. You got a weird job, that's all. You think so? That what you call it, Ted? Aptitude. Say it figures out I'm supposed to do something. Like work on the lathe or sell in chun. Okay. That don't mean I'm gonna work on no lathe or sell in chun. No, but it... I'm gonna be some flunky somewhere, and I'll be pretty lucky to get it. Is that all you want for yourself? I don't believe you. I think you want more. Sure, I want to grow up to be the president. Now what are you doing? Can't we really talk to each other? You better go rap with one of them college kids, Miss McIntyre. Don't waste your time with me, like I've been counseled today. Really? Where? I looked in the mirror. <laughs> he has a very poor self-image. All I know is when Jason left my office, I just felt so helpless. Naturally. The kid's a genius at putting people on the defensive. He does it to everybody. Who are you talking about, Jason Allen? Yeah. He doesn't try that guff on me, let me tell you. He knows I won't stand for it. <laughs> Come back. You forgot your hall pass. <laughs> Who am I supposed to help then? Just the college prep kids? No, of course not. Well, I tend to. I definitely tend to. I mean, they're a whole lot easier to deal with than the Jason Allens. Sure they are. But he's a part of this school, too. If I can't reach him, Honey, then the whole thing... look. Family... You've got to accept the possibility that you might not make it. I've been poking and prying at him all semester in class. I get nothing back. Zero. He just doesn't give. I know that's hard to accept. Particularly since you're not listening to me. You look at that. That's good. Look at those letters. They're in perfect proportion to each other. Kind of gothic. You know, that's not easy. And a vampire. Now, that is an interesting vampire. Liz. Whoever drew that is a real artist. Whoever? Wait! Wait! Wait a minute, wait! Hey, would you unfold the banner just for a few minutes? What for? Taft beat us already. I want somebody to see it. 
I'll be right back, okay? Hey, where are you going? To get Alice. Alice? She works summers as a designer. She knows a whole lot about art. What's going on? Well, she's a... a counselor. You know, there's definitely a post-cubist influence. But then on the other hand, there's almost a surrealistic quality about the bird, like the jutting angle of the beak. Alice, please, seriously. I like it. Really? Do you think he's got talent? Well, he's no Ben Sean, but he's got a good sense of line. He's talented, all right. I knew it. Wait till I tell him. Hey, telling him he can draw is not going to change anything. Well, at least I can recommend some courses and get him motivated. The only thing that would motivate Jason would be something tangible, like a job. Which, of course, I am totally powerless to get him. Wait. You know, I work summers at Brandt's department store, and there's a girl who's head of the art department there, and she's a friend of mine. She likes me. And well, they're always looking for people who can draw. Alice, do you think she could do something? Well, I don't want to promise anything. Well, I mean, I want to, but all the kids she's hired before, you know, have really been outstanding. Well, as you can see, Jason stands out. Can I get rid of this thing now? Oh, sure. What do we need it for? It's half feet us, didn't it? <laughs> All set with personnel. Uh, we can send your forms down later. Now, let's see, when can you begin? Oh, you can start right away, can't you, Jason? Probably. Well, then, welcome aboard. <laughs> Jason, you got the job. Isn't that marvelous? Nobody but a fool take a job and he don't know what it pays. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. It's 2.25 an hour to start. Mm hmm. What about medical? A group plan. What about vacation? I believe it's one week after you've worked here for a year. Okay. Uh, you're, uh, you're sure you don't want to hear all about retirement? No, 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 no. Good. Well, I don't know too much about that myself. Uh, I'll get Ross. He'll get you started. How come you did all that? All what? You know, fixing it up here. Jason, you got the job because you're right for it. And because I had me a good connection, right? Okay. But you still got to cut it on your own, so it comes down to the same thing. How come you did it? You know what your real aptitude is, Jason? District Attorney. Okay. I had to earn my pay. I'm not just a college prep counselor. And you are not a born flunky. You're beautiful, Jason Allen, and you got a lot of talent. So why don't you just get off this self-pity stuff? Don't blow your cool, Miss McIntyre. Art and Vivian read a bad review. Art and Vivian. You say the Sistine Chapel and they read a bad review. Honey, we don't have to go to a movie at all. Yeah, I know, but... Hey, what's that? I don't know. It's from Brands. Looks like you got a present. It's from Jason. A coat? That's funny, no wrapping paper. He didn't even take the price tag off. $49.95. At <laughs> Brands, they always, always take the price tag off. 
pay for an item. Well, looks like Jason finally learned how to give. Talk about it. Huh? Talk about what, Jason? Come on, man. What are you talking about? She digs me. That's all. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Baby, you looking to get your head whipped? <laughs> I can't help it. Man, you don't know nothing. You too little. That chick can't leave me alone. She even got me a job. <laughs> that doesn't mean she digs you. <laughs> we'll see. Where did she wear the coat I got her? <laughs> the coat? What kind of a coat? Cloth. With an imitation fur collar. Can you give me a rough estimate of its cost? $49.95, not including tax. That's an estimate? <laughs> More or less. You got a pretty good eye there. Do you have any idea who gave you the coat? Nope. Yeah. Liz, which is it? Well, I think I know, Mr. Kaufman, but I'd rather not say. Why not? I could have a little talk with whoever it was, explain to them the rules on acceptance of gifts. What are the rules? Not more than five dollars for a teacher. Of course, in your case, you're a counselor. You're not in a position to influence grades, so I really don't know. I've got to take it back. Not you, the student. Who was it? A rough estimate. Please. I'll bet I know who it was. Andre Rubinoff, wasn't it? His father's in the business. Mr. Kaufman, don't. I got you dead to rights, Andre Rubinoff, your secret admirer. Hey, what's wrong? What'd I say? I acted like an idiot. Mr. Kaufman must think I'm pregnant or something. Oh, I doubt that. I mean, I doubt if you thought that. Oh, this thing has me frantic. Alice would say I'm overreacting. It's the stealing part. Stealing is just wrong. Only if you get caught. No, honey, I don't believe that. But I don't live where the merchants rob me every day. Or the landlords gouge too much rent. What am I telling you all of this for? Oh, no. I think it's very interesting to hear the black point of view. <laughs> Look, it's just this simple. I don't want Jason to lose that job. But I can't keep the coat either. How do we return it? We could just put it back. Just put it back. Isn't that dangerous? Only if you get caught. <laughs> Honey. Five more minutes. Sure. We don't have to if you don't want to. Oh, I want to. I want to. I'm just having a few peanuts, that's all. They don't give you peanuts on Devil's Island. through a bit and just casually put this one on the hanger it's easy right there is nothing to worry about of course not i was just being silly i'll be fine
did you see that man look at me? Him? He didn't look at you. Yes, he did. I'm positive. You didn't notice, perhaps. I'm sure I'm right. I actually felt him looking at me. Oh, Pete, what if he's a detective? He could be going around the back to report me right now. Then we haven't got a minute to lose. Don't look suspicious. <laughs> Jason's doing just great. Jason! Oh, good. Oh, well, I'm afraid I haven't got a second. Excuse me. Where did you get that coat? Came from the store. I know that. But did you buy it? No. But there are extenuating circumstances. Listen, if you didn't buy it, would you let me try it on? <laughs> Allow me. How does it look? Fantastic! Wonderful. I'm gonna go find a mirror. Tell me Teddy Roosevelt was a progressive. How was he a progressive? Richie. He was a reformer, a trust buster. He regulated railroads, opened up national parks. Right. Come in, Jason. Okay, what was his policy called? The New Deal. New deal. What? The Square Deal. Right, the Square Deal. Jason, I believe you have something to say to me. Take the class, Miss Johnson. What's going on? I don't care if you are the teacher. Touch me and I'll break your back. Touch you? Who says I'm going to touch you? Do we have a beef? Anytime you want. Let me get this straight. You think I'm going to attack you. That's why you forced the issue back in class. Class? I ain't coming to that no more. You just going to flunk me anyway. I'm a cold dude, Jason. Why am I doing all this to you? Maybe so you can tell your old lady how you put me down. My old lady? You mean Miss McIntyre? I didn't know she was yours, man. How am I supposed to know that? So you thought I was going to fire on you for messing with it? Nothing I wouldn't do. Look, Jason, there's a mistake here. I don't hold anything against you. Now, why don't you go back in class and we'll just forget this whole thing? Forget you? I'm split, Jason. You going to try and stop me? I get you a job, and you quit school. It's not the job. Okay.
Jason. I'm sorry if you misunderstood my intentions. But it's nothing to be ashamed of. It was very flattering. It must have been pretty funny. A young kid. Jason. It must have been pretty funny. No. It was very nice. It scared me a little bit. Scared you? Jason, whatever else you may be, you're not too young for me. In many ways, you're much, much too old. Please don't quit school. You took the coat back. Yes, I certainly did. Because it was stolen. I am not a fence, Jason. And you're jeopardizing every other student who works here. Besides, it's dumb to steal. Would you keep it if it was bought? I don't know. I really don't know. Dang, yeah. I might consider going back. But... But what? I told Richie about the coat. Made him a bet you wear it. Uh-huh. I see. Well... Maybe we can work something out. Very big, Miss McIntyre. I should think so. It's going to be one of the hottest days of the year. <laughs> Just keep in mind when your birthday rolls around that I bought you a present six months early. Half a present. By the way, what did you and Jason work out? He's going to pay me five dollars a month for the rest of his life. He did. <laughs> Mind if I ask you a personal question? No, go right ahead. Who gave you that coat? And admirer. Anyone in particular? Now, Richie, that would be telling. Mm -hmm. 